Hi. Today I'll be showing you how you can use your Bitranger to get sounds like this out of the Archeria drum root, and how it can interact with synths like the Make Noise Nookers. I'm Graham Trudeau. Now, let's get started. First, let's connect the Bitranger's clock out to the drum root's clock in. You'll want to make sure that the divider beside the clock out on the Bitranger is set to divisions of two. You'll also want to make sure that the drum root is set to sync to the incoming signal by hitting the sync button until the CV light is illuminated. If everything's gone well, you should be able to change the tempo of the drum root by turning the LFO knob on the Bitranger. Next, you're going to want to turn the LFO knob up as high as you can while still getting a stable clock signal. Too high and it'll stop clocking the drum brute entirely. But if you get it just right and you put in some more steps, you effectively create a tone generator. Each sound on the drum brute behaves differently when you do this and you can get interesting results by combining sounds. Pitched sounds when combined create sort of oscillator swarms and inharmonic sounds can be combined to create all sorts of interesting tones and textures. Moving on, its behavior with the no coast is a little more conventional. First, you'll want to connect the Bitranger's clock out to the no coast's tempo in, and then take the no coast's tempo out to the gate input under the contour section. This gets us pinging, but we want pitch. That's a little simpler. Just take the byte output from your Bitranger to the volt per octave input on the no-coast. Ta-da! Well, this isn't the most complex patch on its own, I do love the addition of an envelope to the Bitranger's arpeggios. I think it makes them a little less grating to listen to for a long time, and just generally more dynamic. Of course, you can make it even more interesting by taking a slow loop from the slope generator and using that to modulate parameters like the envelope's decay time. To make it even more dynamic, let's patch something to the Bitranger's LFO CV in. This will add swing. Remember, where you patch the ins and outs on the Bitranger affect the strength of the CV signal. The leftmost socket is going to produce the weakest signal, and the rightmost the strongest. A stronger modulation will give us a very artificial, pronounced, but maybe interesting swing. And that's it. Hopefully you're feeling a little more comfortable with some of the ways you can use CV clocking to get interesting behaviors out of your instruments. If you've liked the video, please subscribe, and if there's anything you'd like to see me talk about in the future, please leave a comment below. Now, let's go out on a track I made using some of the techniques I covered in this video. Thank <laughs> you.